Spurlock, uh, you know, ate McDonald's for 30 days, only McDonald's, and any time at the time they had a promotion uh, asking if you wanted to supersize your order where they would, you know, throw on another dollop of whatever they were serving you, and he would always say yes. Um, there's a particular scene in that movie, um, and he died of cancer uh, recently, but uh, he was 53. But he died uh, in the movie. He goes to his doctor, and the doctor says that his liver functions are obscene. Uh, the the actual phrase was, "It looked your liver looked like an alcoholic's after a binge." And Morgan Spurlock in the documentary is like, oh, you know, and it's like, it turns out that during the making of that movie, Morgan Spurlock was an alcoholic and had been drinking since he was 13. Uh, he uh, later said that he had not been sober for more than a week in 30 years. He said that in 2017. Um, and so this is one of the great you know, it's a great documentary in many, many ways. It's a participatory thing. You can see how it's very much in the tradition of Michael Moore, who I'll get to in a second. But documentary films, the better they are and the bigger they are, oftentimes the faker they are. And Super Size Me was a profoundly fake documentary. Um, and I think that's worth remembering. You know, at the, at the time of Morgan Spurlock's death, I say this as somebody who actually enjoyed a lot of his subsequent work. A couple of years after that on FX, he had a fantastic uh, series called 30 Days, where he would pair people and put them in, you know, kind of riffing off the Super Size Me thing where he ate McDonald's for a month. He would send people to live in an uncomfortable situation for, you know, for a month. Uh, and there was a great episode, for instance, I think most of these are online in various places, where he sent somebody who hated guns to go live with a family, a rural family that had a lot of guns. And it was fantastic drama. It was like he oftentimes started to take right and left wing kind of verites and would kind of force people to recognize that they weren't, you know, that the other side was human. So I'm not saying he was like a truly horrible person or anything. In 2017, clearly about to be canceled. He also came out with a Me Too statement where he essentially resigned from his company and talked about various experiences he had had. Um, and that ended, effectively ended his career. So it's like a, a weird and sad career arc ending, you know, most sadly and tragically in a young death from cancer. But uh, his death and particularly the popularity of Super Size Me and its fakeness is something that we need to always be grappling with. I mentioned uh, Michael Moore, his Bowling for Columbine documentary is a good example of this, where he faked significant amounts of the speech and the and the uh, action, you know, where he goes to a bank and opens a, a bank account and walks out with a gun. Like, that's not actually how it happened. Uh, you know, going back to one of the first, the clan, I'm sorry, I obviously care a lot about documentaries. One of the very first modern documentary films, Nanak of the North, uh, which thankfully now you only watch that if you go to a film school. Uh, that was a completely faked documentary as well about Eskimos and among other things that had, uh, you know, and these are bizarre and amazing. Like the, the, in the, in the context of the movie Nanook, who was not actually Nanook, it was another guy who lived in a house, but he had them build igloos to live in, to film and things like that. And they would shoot fish and whales and seals with guns, but he made them go out with spears to do it. But there's a scene where Nanook's plural wives are trailing behind him. And they're actually the white director's common law wives. I mean, it's just like, it, <laughs> you know, the entire history of documentary film, with the exception of the things that Zach Weismuller and Reason TV does on a daily basis, <sighs> are awesome. so phony and this goes back to Matthew Brady stage, so many of the photographs in the Civil War, Robert Capa, the great photographer, documentary photographer of the Spanish Civil War, faked most of his most famous images, raising Iwo Jima, faked. I mean, like we, the flag at Iwo Jima, uh, we should take, you know, Morgan Spurlock's death, Spurlock's death to, you know, extend our condolences to his friends and family, but also to level up on our media criticism, because most of the things that we are told in an information age are either absolutely fake or they are so framed in a way as to be almost completely misleading. We need to have a better bullshit detector. And, you know, maybe that will be Morgan Spurlock's uh, greatest legacy. 
Check out the uh, counter documentary Fathead, by the way. A guy made a documentary where he went and ate McDonald's and then lost weight. Uh, so that's that was the great thing about that era of like big documentaries is there would always be like the counter documentary. Uh, and that's actually a really good one. A Swedish team of researchers did a, uh, a, a study uh, where they fed Swedes. So, you know, go figure. But uh, 6,000 calories of McDonald's food a day for 30 days. Most of <laughs> oh the people God. actually lost weight on it. And, and all of their vitals went better. Um, I, and I, not to extend this too long, uh, go Google, uh, f- you know, false claims in Al Gore's Academy Award winning An Inconvenient Truth. We've all forgotten about Al Gore. Um, but uh, that movie also filled with absolute fakery to such a degree that a court in England ruled that it could not be marketed as a documentary. That was a clip from the latest Reason Roundtable. If you want to see more clips, go here. If you want to see the whole episode, go here. Make sure to subscribe at Reason's YouTube channel or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening, watching, or both.